Just a free thing, John. Push into me. Like my body feels feels the beating. This can my body can really feel. But well, obviously the rest will make it stronger. But I can really feel like the, uh, the physicality on my body. After I fought Takam, you know, I had a month off straight into the training for Parker. And after the Parker fight, it was non-stop. So I just didn't balance, you know, myself as much as I should as an athlete. Because as an athlete, it's so important to rest and look after yourself. So um, I went into camp already like mentally tired, but I got through it. <sighs> oh, yeah. No training camp or fight is ever smooth. <laughs> this has been a 10 year project. Still not the finished article, because where we're trying to go is to the unknown and see how far we can take it. We're trying to conquer new territory now. I'm a star right, got a bark right, I induce pain, I am Luke Kane, mix a Bruce Wayne, I'm a dark knight, what you stargaze, got a hard bite, I'm a dog, at the leash, better talk right, bet I do this, not a new kid, been a student, you're a doofus, on a real, leave you clueless, when I shoot shit, style too crisp, and I let it all hang out like a nudist. <laughs> You've got to take in the environment around you. I spend a lot of time indoors. I drive from A to B. It just became part of my routine. It keeps my legs strong. It's a good way to do some recovery. <laughs> You guys are uh oh. <laughs> I just kissed me! I saw you flinch. <laughs> <laughs> you think I don't walk? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 Ah, <laughs> oh, I never forget that spider story you told me, bro. What, in my bed? In your bed. <laughs> I just remember sleeping and something told me, just look behind you, I see the fattest spider on my wall. You know when your bed's pushed up against the wall? That like, hasn't got no headboard. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. I'm like on I didn't sleep in my room for about four days. I slept <laughs> in the living room. <laughs> what? <laughs> shower. This fight week was good because it was just like, I felt like I was at home being in London, so I felt like I had a week at home that I needed. Just a shape up boss, please. But I know you're gonna still make me look fresh and then maybe a little Caesar. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know. Let's go. The dangling carrot that hang from the rear view. Uh -huh. Your dreams in the past ain't nowhere near you. Backseat drivers got nothing but two cents. Shotgun riders, two buyers, they all liars. Come closer. <laughs> Stop right there. Stop right there. <laughs> Three, four, to the time when it was. I hit a flu, I had the flu on Friday. I just thought, you know, I just need to recover. So when fight we was here, I was just resting as much as possible. I've still got my obligations, still got training to do, but you don't want to show too much weakness. You could probably hear it in my voice now. And I've said to myself, if I get through this, it shows I can compete at a top level without being 100%. Former WBA heavyweight world champion, Stephen Thompson. 
stepping onto the scales at this time, Alexander Sasha Pugliakin. What I've learned about these guys, right? You can watch them, you can watch them. It's good to know what they're good at, but you never know like what they truly possess until you are in that ring with them. Good thing about boxing, right? You don't need nothing. What do you need? A pair of boots, or if you've got a pair of trainers, some wraps. If you ain't got wraps, you can, you know, cut a line off your towel, wrap around your hands, and use some sellotape to protect your knuckles and your wrist. And a coach, so me and my coach, we went in the, the front room, the ceilings were high enough to get the, the skipping rope going. I jumped on the skipping rope, warmed up, and me and him in the house just started boxing away. Bang, boom, bang. Just cracking on, warming up, having a good session. When normally you would think that you have to be in a boxing gym if you was a footballer, you have to be on the football pitch, tennis player, you have to be on a tennis court. But with boxing, we just, wherever it works, it works. If there was no space in there, we would have gone in the garden and done it. Which people don't even realise. My first pro fights, I was in the back of the matchroom offices on their grass. That's why I used to train. You know, throughout the summer, we didn't have a gym to start with. I started off my pro career just training in the garden. You know, we didn't need much. I had a good trainer and uh, my mindset was in the right place and I worked and I got here today. So boxing is a sport where you don't need too many luxuries. The luxury you need is a good mindset and a good coach. <laughs> Ideally, I'd love to be sitting at the table with the lads having a good crack, but I've got work to do. I've got a job to complete and uh, it's just building a, a mindset, a long-term mindset. You know, I could have been like, oh, can we train later? I want to sit and have, you know, dinner with the lads, but that's not the mindset you need as a winner. This is an individual sport, so you've got to think for yourself. So I worry about what i got to do and worry about the rest later. So I had my little pre-fight nap. Normally I wake up feeling 10-10. This time I woke up feeling 17, <laughs> and I was like, wow. So I thought, I'm trying to sleep on the way to the arena. And I had this different aura about me this training week where I just felt like I needed to be left alone because I was in my own thoughts to a certain extent. So I get to the arena, I chill out, you know, I would just sit on the floor, I just start loosening up my body. Chef? Hey, hey, how are you doing, sir? We have so many fans out there. Mm. that love and support you. So does that make you want to do better each and every time? Without a doubt, without a doubt. These supporters are coming out time and time again. As much effort as I put in in the training camp and in my fight, they put in following my journey, supporting me. So it's a kind of give and take relationship. So I've got to give something back tonight with a good performance. I felt five out of 10, four out of 10 on a sparring day. And I've gone in there and I've had a good session. So I thought, if I feel seven or a six and I've got to spar or fight Povetkin, I said it shouldn't be a problem. I've felt like this a million times. And that's why you need it tough in training. That's why you need it tough. So I just look at things always in a positive light. Can I ask you one thing? Sure. Word of advice for tonight. Where? <laughs> <laughs> I just took a coffee to get my mind mentally stimulated. And that was it really. There's no turning back. Let's get this party started! Oh, yeah, Ken! And now, making his entrance to the ring, reigning and defending. Even up until my last fight with Parker, when I fought Parker, I could see everyone around the ring and all that stuff. But this fight, I didn't really tune into no one except for Vetkin. Russian! 
Russian roulette with the third best heavyweight in the world in the vastly experienced Alexander Povetkin. We hope for another classic to fire up this damn night. Waiting and picking his shot back nicely. Good work. Power. Oh, gets inside Against through and a little stumble from Joshua at the end of the first round. It might be a problem with the Joshua nose. There's blood from it. Might be a Povetkin. It's trying to go. Vek is quite short, right? So trying to fight someone short, sometimes it's a bit difficult because you're punching down, you're missing shots, they're rolling under shots. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to go in a low stance and I'm going to hit Povetkin head on. Joshua improving. And there's a cut there. Left eye of Povetkin. And it's a nasty one. This is excellent from AJ. Well, good work from AJ now. He's found his way for this jab. You just can't throw shots and expect to land. You have to position your body to land your shots. So um, I got myself in the right position and I started popping that jab to his head and to his body. Jab to the body from Joshua. Some people are saying Joshua would take that one. Surely he might be here. to do. As I said, I sparred so many rounds, I trained so hard, I put my body through it. I just knew the outcome. You know, I knew I was tough enough to go through it to win it. We just teached him up. What, his eyes? Yeah, up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He needed about five, six stitches. Yeah. What are these signs? Because I'm about, and I know my body so well, and I'm thinking, what are these signs? Someone from the church took this fight. Then I said to myself, you know what? If I can get through this fight and beat someone who's worst, it shows my body. Yeah, it takes me on to the I know what this takes. I've been a professional for five years. And I just think to myself, imagine being, you know, 39, going through X amount of training camps, fighting X amount of rounds, sparring X amount of rounds, and being that consistent. I have to commend him, man. That's why I respect Klitschko so much. And that's why I had to go into Povetkin's change room and I just tell them, this one night doesn't define your whole career. You achieved so much and you just fell short tonight. So I want to respect you for your challenge and I just wish them good luck in their future. Thank you. That's all, just respect. You could, from amateur, very, uh, very consistent. Yeah. And I want to come to Russia. Yeah, but he's right. Yeah, Anytime. Welcome, anytime. God bless you, yeah. Congratulations. Can we take one photo? Shall we take one? Everyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team four. When I came back to the house, it felt like a, a normal week, like after a training session, after a long day of just coming back after sparring or competing. It just felt surreal. <laughs> KD, it was his birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! You know what fucking shit! You know what fucking shit! You know what fucking shit! 
So it's not always about me with the lads. You know, I had my fight, but that's done. It was my boy's birthday. We wish him happy birthday. We had a good sing along. And we just get back to normal living. So these guys and my family support me through thick and thin. They, they love me and they were with me before boxing. And they'll love me and be with me long after boxing. So it's nice to come back to the family home because um, it's nice being amongst people that care for you just for who you are. It's not about the boxing.